This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 6.4.3.4, configuring a floating static route, which is a part of the Routing and Switching Essentials curriculum in the Cisco Networking Academy. Now in this lab, hopefully by this time you've completed the uh, 6.2.2.4, configuring IP version 4 static and default routing, and uh, 6.2.4, 4.4, which is uh, configuring IP version 6 static and default routing. So we've got our command down pat, and you kind of still you recognize the directly attached method versus the recursive method. Um, so go back and review that in the first two labs if you're still struggling with that. So in this one, we kind of use the same IPv4 command, uh, but with with IP route, but we are going to configure like a static backup, which is called a floating route. So we'll look at what that actually means. So in our lab assignment here, we've got, it tells us in our directions, um, configure a directly attached static default route from the edge router to the internet. The primary default route should be through ISP1. Okay, so directly attached means we need to put what exit interface locally is it going to leave out of the edge router to get to ISP1. So we need a packet, let's say it's coming from PCA, right? It doesn't really matter, PCA or PCB. They converge here at the edge router. And then we've got two paths we can take, up through ISP1 or down here through ISP2, eventually getting to the internet and hopefully routing to our web server and returning back. Okay, so the I, the edge router basically remember a default route means all zeros. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here. Okay, I'm gonna put my command IP route, and remember I'm going to do all zeros here. Okay, so zero 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 for the network address and the subnet mask for the destination of where I'm trying to get to, okay? Now, that means it accounts for anything. So anything I don't know about, which is in the internet, the grand scheme of things could be anything, including this little web server over here. All right, I'm gonna send it to ISP and hopefully it knows what to do from there because this further got some other routers in there. So we want this one to be our first choice, okay? So it's gonna leave out of serial 000 on the edge router to get up there, okay? So that's how the directly attached method means, okay? And you don't have to worry about that message there. It's, it's gonna work. However, all right, that if we look at a do show IP route, okay? Remember, these all have administrative distances and it looks at which one has the lowest administrative distance as the more favorable route. All right, now, if you remember back to our diagram about which one is more favorable than others, a static route is only second to directly connect it. So the static route is kind of like, uh, you know, it's going to look at very favorable here. So that static route here is going to be chosen if it gets an IP address of anything it doesn't know about. Okay, anything is not directly connected to it. Obviously, this web server is not. All right, it has an administrative distance of one, okay, for a static route, okay? So that's what we got here. However, let's say this link were to go down. Remember that was a, uh, a con or a, a disadvantage of using a bunch of static routes to configure your network from end to end. It's good for some things, but let's have a backup because if I even go through ISP2, I can still get to the web server, right? So that way people can have a backup, more reliability, you know, the more your internet is available, the better. You know, I don't want to come home and, and my internet is not able to be, you know, utilized because I've got TiVos and, you know, kids that stream stuff 24-7, so nobody would be happy. I play video games online, so we need it to be running 24-7, right? So we'll have a backup here that if this one goes down, we can still go down here. But if I configure it just like I did the other one and say, okay, well, IP route, all zeros, but this time send it out of S001, it's gonna look at it like, well, every time I get something in, I'm not gonna know which one to choose. So to make it not an administrative distance of one, like my first one, instead of just IP route, all zeros, this time I'm gonna send it out of S001, but if you use a question mark at the end, you see this distance metric 
okay I can actually put a number behind it and change that administrative distance to a different number so that it is higher so it's going to kind of be like the backup so it's going to choose remember it's kind of like golf the lower the better it's going to choose this one with an administrative distance of one first then it's going to go to the second one which I'm going to manually change second so it's always going to choose this one first but this one's kind of be like the backup or they call it a floating one so they tell us to put a um, right here the administrative distance of five okay of five to get to ISP2 so we're gonna leave out of S001 and we're gonna get to ISP2 but we're gonna put a five at the end of that command okay so that actually will now all right we'll have two static routes and one of them will be a floating route all right and it tells you you've got a gateway of last resort set up at the top now that's the only thing this lab grades because you see we have a 90 out of 90 here all right that's the only thing this lab grades it says test the failover though right so we want to test to make sure everything is actually working so let's zoom out here a little bit Okay, and we can do a ping test. Let's uh, not be lazy this time and do the envelope. So actual ping 198.0.0.tm. Okay, that's the IP address of the web server. All right, and we get a request timeout for the first one, but if we redo it, we see we're getting 32, you know, a reply every single time, okay? Same thing from PCB. Let's try that one. Okay. And we get a good reply there. All right. So it's going up using the ISP1 every single time. But let's say that link broke, right? So it says uh, administratively disable the exit interface to the primary route. So I'm going to go on Edge Router. And I'm actually going to go into interface S000, which is that one connected to ISP right here. And I'm going to do a shutdown. We see it turn red, right? Okay. So let's see if our backup route actually works. So now it should kick in, okay, and start taking this bottom path here. All right. So now, okay, let's try pinging. See if we get anything back. Boom, we start getting stuff back. We try it again, we are getting connectivity. All right, let's try it over here. It takes a minute, do you know, it takes a minute for your network to converge and realize that that first route wasn't working. <clears throat> you see there, we've got 100% connectivity now if you try it again, right? And it also says you can do a trace route to that actual IP address as well. Okay. 